At the outbreak of the First Tiberium War, the Global Defense Initiative and the Brotherhood of Nod found themselves closely matched in terms of their military assets, funding, and technology. In fact, it could be argued that the Brotherhood was actually more well-equipped and funded than GDI, due to the fact that the Brotherhood controlled almost half the world's Tiberium production, as well as having secret ties to various defense contractors, allowing them to have access to weapons, vehicles, and other technologies that they normally wouldn't be able to acquire. Because of this, GDI had to develop some of their own new and advanced weapons and vehicles in order to better counter the Brotherhood. One of these vehicles ended up becoming one of the most well-known and recognizable aircraft in the GDI arsenal, the Orca. There isn't any information available on when exactly development on the first Orca aircraft began, but it might have been happening before the outbreak of the First Tiberium War, possibly under the codename Project Orca, according to the EVA installation sequence for Tiberian Dawn. The name Orca being derived from the killer whales that inhabit the Earth's oceans, apex predators of the dolphin family that hunt other marine animals such as fish, seals, and even whales. GDI wanted an aircraft that was basically an improved version of the AH-64 Apache attack helicopter, which the Brotherhood had many of in their arsenal. This gunship needed to be able to take out a variety of targets, from infantry to vehicles and even structures. They also wanted the craft to be highly maneuverable as well, so as not to be easily shot down by Nod SAM sites. After experimenting and testing out what I can only assume were a few prototypes, GDI settled on a final design for the aircraft. Officially named the Orca Assault Craft, the defining feature was its VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, capabilities. This allows the aircraft to hover, take off, and land vertically just like a helicopter. But instead of using standard rotary blades, the aircraft uses two turbofans attached to either side of the main body. Turbofans can produce more thrust compared to standard rotor blades, which is what makes the Orca such a fast vehicle compared to standard attack helicopters like the Brotherhood's Apache. In addition, the design of the main body, which is quite small, allowed the aircraft to be more aerodynamic, able to fly through tight spaces like canyons at high speeds. A small duct fan is located on the tail of the Orca, which would provide the aircraft with more vertical lift and stability. The tail itself is a twin tail, also called an H-tail, as it resembles a letter H when looking at it from the rear. At the middle top section of the aircraft, between the two turbofans, is where the small radar dome is located, which reminds me of an AN-APG-78 longbow fire control radar, which is used on the AH-64D Apache helicopter. This radar allows the Orca to acquire targets from behind obstacles such as trees and buildings. It can even track and engage multiple targets at the same time as well, and probably relay info on targets to other Orca aircraft and ground forces. Of course, located at the front of the main body of the Orca is the cockpit, which provides a single seat for the pilot, who operates all functions of the aircraft, including the actual flying of the craft, as well as the identifying and engaging of targets. The bubble canopy which encloses the cockpit is made of bulletproof glass in order to protect the pilot from light weapons fire and provide him with as wide a field of view as possible. Right below the cockpit, at the nose of the aircraft, is what seems to be a Target Acquisition and Designation Sites, or TADS sensor. The sensor can rotate plus or minus 120 degrees in azimuth, and about plus 30 or minus 80 degrees in elevation. This movement can also match that of the pilot's head movements as well. The TADS comes with a laser target designator, monochrome daylight television camera, and night vision system. It also has a standard light on it as well. As for the Orca's armaments, right below the cockpit, at the belly of the craft's main body, is a six-barreled Gatling cannon. This weapon is primarily used to engage enemy ground forces, in particular infantry and light vehicles, and it has limited rotation. In addition to the Gatling cannon, the Orca is also equipped with two rocket pods, one pod attached to each wing of the vehicle. Each pod could hold a total of nine Hydra 70 rockets. These rockets are primarily used against ground targets, but can be used to engage other aircraft as well. Now I will note a bit of a discrepancy in the CNC manual, which says that, quote, the craft carries five salvos of tow rockets. 
This description makes sense for how the vehicle functions in-game, with the tow missiles being able to follow their targets somewhat. But in terms of all other images, artwork, or cutscenes of the vehicle, the rockets function closer to the aforementioned Hydra 70s. Also important to mention is that even though the Orca does have a Gatling gun, it isn't used in-game either. Another issue with the Orca Mark I is that there isn't any landing gear on the belly of the aircraft. I'm going to go with the assumption that the landing gear is just retracted inside the body of the craft during flight. The landing gear, of course, needs to be able to keep the Orca high enough off the ground so that ground crews can access the Gatling gun underneath, as well as for general inspection and maintenance of the aircraft itself. The Orca was capable of landing anywhere on flat terrain. Of course, when stationed at a GDI base, the aircraft would stay parked on a helipad for rearming and refueling. These types of helipads were in use by both the Brotherhood and GDI during the First War, and were not limited to just Orcas and Apaches. The pads were large enough to handle bigger transport aircraft, such as the Chinook helicopter, which both factions also had in their arsenals. These helipads were mostly made of concrete, and featured large, brightly colored X symbols in the middle of them, to indicate to helicopter and orca pilots exactly where to land on the pad. In-game, this X flashes to let the player know that the orca is being rearmed. A couple of vents and barrels were located on the sides of the pad. Pipes can also be seen hooked up to parts of the pad as well, so perhaps fuel is also stored below it for better protection. There is also this square-looking extrusion on the side of the pad, which I guess is used to store parts, fuel, or even ammunition for the aircraft. And of course, the pad has two ramp extensions on the side for ground crew and supplies to reach the top of the pad with. The Orca could also be stationed on aircraft carriers and LHD amphibious assault ships. The one thing the helipad does not do, however, is repair any aircraft on it. For repairs, the Orca is capable of landing on the repair facility. Once the Orca is repaired, rearmed, and refueled, it can get to work with whatever missions the local GDI commander requires. At one point, GDI did experiment with a mobile helipad, which was basically just a semi-truck with a helipad trailer attached to it, allowing an Orca to land on it and save on fuel or even rearm while being transported to a new location. But these experiments ultimately did not make it past the testing phase. The Orca proved to be a formidable multi-purpose aircraft that saw action throughout much of the First Tiberium War able to fly in and quickly destroy not vehicles such as the light tanks or buggies, and return to base quickly. They could even make strikes on not bases using their incredible speed to dodge missiles launched from SAM sites. The aircraft was also highly formidable in numbers, especially when striking an important structure. Even though the Orca is primarily used against ground targets, it could engage other aircraft such as the not Apache if it needed to. Near the end of the First Tiberium War, a slightly different model of the Orca became part of GDI's arsenal. I say slightly different, since everything about it was the same as the original, except that the Gatling gun underneath the aircraft was replaced with two smaller machine guns. The Orca assault craft was such a successful aircraft for GDI that they continued to use and improve the vehicle in the interim years between the First and Second Tiberium Wars. GDA also took the name Orca and used it to apply to an entire family of aircraft to fulfill multiple roles for the organization, including fighters, bombers, and even transports. By around the time of the Second Tiberium War, the Orca assault craft had been replaced with a new and improved version of the aircraft, called the Orca Fighter. Not only did this fighter replace the original Orca, but it also replaced all the standard jets that GDI had used during the First War, such as the FA-18 Hornet and the A-10 Warthog. While the fighter shared some similarities with its predecessor, it did have some key differences. The first was that the turbofans on the sides were downsized, but it kept the small ducted fan on the H-tail. The craft does seem to have two other engines on top of its wings though. I assumed the wing engines would provide the thrust for the fighter, while the turbofans provided the lift. Though I don't think having the turbofans placed right in front of the wing engine's exhaust makes much sense. The wings themselves also act as housing cases for the large guided missiles equipped on the fighter, with four missiles in each wing, which can be used against both ground and air targets. And finally, there's the cockpit, which is bigger compared to the original Orca craft. I believe this to be because the fighter has two pilots to operate the vehicle. The pilot that actually flies the vehicle would sit in the back seat, and the co-pilot would sit in the front seat, and be responsible for acquiring and engaging targets. The Gatling gun on the original Orca was absent from the fighter, since its primary role was as a fast attack craft, to fly in, engage enemy targets, and fly out quickly. At least, that's how it's portrayed in the cutscenes. Actual gameplay of the fighter leaves much to be desired, as it can't actually engage enemy air targets, nor is it really that maneuverable at all. 
They also provided escort support for other aircraft in GDI's arsenal at this time, one of which specialized in destroying large groups of Nod forces and structures, the Orca Bomber. Heavier and better armored than its fighter cousin, the Orca Bomber trades speed for firepower. Delivering a stream of high explosive bombs and strafing runs, the Orca Bomber is ideal for softening up ground defenses during the beginning of a base assault. The bomber features quite a different design compared to its fighter cousin. The aircraft itself is bigger and bulkier, due to the payload of bombs that it carries on missions. Similar to the fighter, it uses two large ducted turbofans for lift, and has two more engines on the top parts of its wings, and what looks to be a third one in the middle back portion of the craft's body. The primary defining feature of the bomber is the twin boom tail, which has two small fans on each of the tail fins. Just like the Orca fighter, the bomber also has two pilots in the cockpit, with the back seat pilot being the one responsible for flying the craft, and the front seat co-pilot acting as the bombardier. The bomber's wings act as its bomb bay. The aircraft can carry a total of 16 bombs, 8 under each wing. In-game, the bomber only drops 8 bombs total, 4 on the first run, and 4 more on the second. Both runs combined are capable of destroying most defensive structures, including Nod Obelisks of Light. Unlike the fighter, which is fast and agile, capable of dodging Nod SAM sites, the bomber is slower moving due to its heavier payload, but it's also a little more resilient than the fighter, able to sustain more damage before going down. As with the first Tiberium War, Orca aircraft would land to rearm and refuel at helipads located in GDI bases. The design of the GDI helipad changed, with the pad itself looking more square-shaped rather than circular. Two fuel tanks are located to one side of the pad, between what, in-game at least, looks to be two additional structures or bunkers of some type. The munitions themselves, I assume, are kept either underground beneath the pad or in one of the affixed structures. Of course, if the aircraft need to be repaired of any damage they received on a mission, they will have to land on a service depot. The helipads can even hold the larger Orca aircraft in GDI's arsenal, the first of which is the Orca Transport. As its name suggests, the aircraft was used to transport supplies, troops, or civilians, so its role was the same as that of the Chinooks used during the First Tiberium War. Similar to the other Orca aircraft, it uses four small turbofan engines, but it seems to have two more engines on the top of the aircraft to provide additional thrust. The craft has three cargo doors, two on each side of it, and one large door on the back, which acts as a ramp when opened. One pilot and one co-pilot operate the aircraft from the cockpit, which is mostly made of glass, including glass on the bottom of the cockpit for the pilots to see the ground below them. Four lights are also attached to the front as well, and there are six legs on the bottom of the main body of the aircraft that act as landing gear. The aircraft itself is lightly armored and not very fast, making it extremely vulnerable to Nod SAM sites. This means that if the craft needs to extract civilians from an area, GDI ground forces will first need to clear said area of possible SAM sites before the transports arrive. However, in order to transport large vehicles such as the MLRS or Titan Mark I, GDI needed a larger aircraft. This aircraft ended up being the Carryall, the largest of the Orcas. As a fun side fact, the Carryall was also the name of the aircraft seen in Westwood's Dune games, which would drop off and retrieve a harvester when it finished collecting or unloading spice. Just like with the transport, the Carryall is also powered by four turbofan engines, only these are much larger in order to provide the craft with enough lift for itself and any vehicles that it's carrying. Like the bomber, the Carryall also has a fan on the tail fin as well, I assume to provide it with more stability. The cockpit is also designed similarly to both the fighter and the bomber, in that the pilot and co-pilot sit in a front and back seat. The craft has three landing legs, one in the front under the cockpit, and two in the back below the tail. Of course, the most important part of the aircraft is the large grappling hook below the middle of its body, which it uses to pick up practically any vehicle. In-game, this even includes the Mammoth Mark II, which doesn't really make much sense given how massive the Mammoth Walker actually is, However, GDI did have an aircraft specialized to carry the Mammoth, known as the Dropship, which I plan to go into more detail about in a future video. Just like the Orca Transport, the Carryall was also lightly armored and unarmed, but it could fly faster than both the Transport and the Bomber. While many of these aircraft would be phased out of GDI's arsenal after the Second Tiberium War, the Carryall would live on in a similarly designed predecessor. Only instead of being used by GDI, it would be by the Brotherhood of Nod, who also made use of the aircraft to transport their troops and vehicles across the battlefield.
As previously mentioned, due to GDI military funding cuts after the Second War, many of their advanced weapons and vehicles were phased out. This included much of their Orca aircraft, including the bomber, fighter, transport, and carry-all. Both the Orca fighter and bomber would be replaced by the Firehawk, which could perform both of those craft's roles in one. The Orca transport and carry-all would be replaced by the V-35 Ox. However, GDI would revive and improve upon the original Orca assault craft from the First Tiberium War. This craft would be known as the A-15 Orca gunship, also called the Orca Mark IV. Or is it the Mark III? So there is a little bit of a discrepancy in this aircraft's naming, as the intelligence database refers to it as the Mark IV version. However, according to lore from Tiberium Twilight, which many people know by now that I try to avoid referencing as much as possible, it's said that the Mark IV version of the Orca was considered a failure, hence the invention of the Mark V, which is used in that game. But this contradicts the intelligence database entry from Command & Conquer 3, which says that the Mark IV is a quote, state-of-the-art aircraft. So the Mark I is the aircraft used in the first Tib War, the Mark II is the fighter used in the second Tib War, so naturally this version, the A-15, should be the Mark III, and not the Mark IV. And there's no information that another Mark III was used during the interim years before the Third Tiberium War, which means that the real Mark IV Orca had to have been made after the Third War, and before the events of Tiberium Twilight. So to simplify things, I'll just be referring to the Tib War III Orca as either the A-15 or Orca Gunship. As mentioned, the A-15 Orca is basically an improved version of the original from the First War. According to the GDI Style Guide, quote, The Saab Lancaster Lifting Body Incorporated's A-15 Orca is a prime example of making technology visible in the most advanced attack aircraft in the history of GDI engineering. It features two VTOL ducted Aerodyne engines, a NOTAR tail assembly, a FLIR module at the nose of the aircraft, which allowed the Orca to conduct a pulse scan of its surroundings, allowing it to see stealth units for a short time. This design also had places for the landing gear, with three of the legs being under the main body of the craft, and one leg under the tail, although the tail wheel is not on the teaser trailer version of the Orca. In addition, the aircraft has a Gatling gun mounted below the cockpit with limited rotation. Its standard armament was six guided missiles, which were attached to two, what I'll just call, mounts, on each side of the aircraft near the cockpit. The cockpit itself having one pilot. Or maybe two. In the introduction video for GDI in Command & Conquer 3, there is an image of an orca that pops up that shows some specifications. While I could not make out much of what the text says, given that the font is so small, under the General Characteristics text, it does seem to say that the aircraft has a crew of two. However, this is a direct contradiction to the teaser trailer for CNC-3, which clearly shows Orca aircraft all taking off with only one pilot inside. So I don't know which of these is supposed to be the correct number of pilots, but I'm going to lean on the side of there only being one, due to the fact that we can clearly only see one operating each aircraft in the teaser trailer. Unlike its predecessor, however, the A-15 Orca was designed to be highly customizable. It could upgrade its missile payload from 6 to 10, thanks to an upgrade called Hard Points. Although in-game, the Orca will only fire 9 of them before it needs to return to the airfields to reload. The A-15 does not have to be equipped with missiles though. For example, the Zocom Orca is equipped with paws that fire sonic grenades, which are highly effective against infantry. The Zocom Orca can even be equipped with ceramic armor, making it a more durable aircraft compared to the standard one. The A-15 can also be equipped with sensor pods that it can place on the ground below it. These pods are capable of detecting stealth units and buildings. However, the sensor can also be attached to vehicles, allowing GDI forces in the local area to track them for a short time. According to the GDI style guide, additional upgrades for the Orca gunship were planned during its development, but ultimately none of them ever made it past the concept phase. These included a Linebacker Engine Upgrade, or LCBR, meaning Lifting Body Combat Thrust Retrofit, which would have been attached to the top of the aircraft. Nerf Fuel Tanks, NERF being an acronym for Nominal Extended Range Fuel, attached onto the tail boom, and finally a Hammerhead EMP attached to the nose of the aircraft, also known as HMRD, which stands for High Frequency Massive Radiant Disruptor. Unlike in the past, where much of GDI's VTOL aircraft had individual helipads to land on, now they all landed at one location, simply known as the airfield. Up to four Orcas, or Firehawks, could land at it, However, a combat support airfield can be built to allow landing space for additional aircraft. 
Aircraft that are stationed at these fields can rearm and refuel after a sortie, but unlike the helipads used in the past, they can also receive repairs from small drones as well. One can even tell which upgrades the GDI commander of the airfield has purchased for their craft, with the heart points upgrade being represented by a rack of missiles, and Zocom's ceramic armor represented by a pile of ceramic plates next to the control tower. The Orca gunship wasn't just limited to landing and taking off from airfields on land, however. GDI's naval forces also made use of them on their carriers as well, with up to four Orcas or Firehawks sitting at the ready on the deck of the carrier. The A-15 wasn't the only kind of Orca that GDI had in their arsenal at this time, as they also created a smaller, quicker version of it, which was called the Orca Strike Craft. This craft was extremely fast and primarily used to fly in, drop ordnance on the target location, and fly out. These craft are typically seen flying in squadrons of three, and unlike the A-15 Orca, they do not seem to have VTOL capabilities, instead needing to take off like a typical airplane using a runway. The craft carries a single pilot, and is armed with two rocket pods which fire a cluster of unguided rockets on the target location. Strike craft that are part of Zocom's arsenal are equipped with sonic grenades instead. Since the beginning, the Orca has been a recognizable and integral aircraft in GDI's arsenal. From the assault craft of the First Tiberium War, to the advanced fighter, bomber, and transport variants in the Second War. Though several of the craft ended up being retired in the interim years before the Third Tiberium War, it came back in the form of the Orca gunship and strike craft. It seems that as long as GDI has enemies to fight, whether they be the Brotherhood of Nod or the alien Skrin, the Orca will continue to be seen on the battlefield providing air support for the commanders and ground forces of the Global Defense Initiative.